In 2000, joint announcement of the working draft of the human genome was made. On the pic in the picture, you can see on the left hand side, the bald guy is Greg Venter, founder of Celera Genomics. In the middle, you can see Bill Clinton, president of USA at that time. And on, on, on Bill's left side, you can see uh, Francis Collins, who was head of the Human Genome Consortium at that, at that time. Um, it's good to see how President of United States was involved in this whole affair. I, I, can, I can just wonder that when Pakistani politicians would start to give that much importance to science, that they come and attend science meetings or science achievements like this. Um, Celera Genomics published their results in Science, which is a very famous journal, and, um, and Human Genome Sequencing Consortium published their results in Nature a day before Celera did uh, in, in world-famous journal Nature uh, with the title Initial Sequencing and Analysis of the Human Genome. So, since then, uh, and before that, we can see the timeline of the genome sequenced. So in 1984, Epstein-Barr virus was sequenced. And in 1992, mapping of the Y and chromosome 21. Y is the chromosome which makes male a male. So female has two Xs while a male has XY. And in 1995, hemophilus influenza whole basically microorganism was sequenced in 1997 E. coli which is the workhorse of, workhorse of the industry as well. In 1998 Sinorhabditis elegans which is a worm which was uh, sequenced and in 1999 human chromosome 22 was sequenced. Chromosome 22 was a big achievement because it is attributed to various diseases as well. In 2000 Drosophila melanogaster a fruit fly was sequenced and in 2000, we just saw the picture that working draft of humans was announced. In 2000, a plant, Arabidopsis thaliana, was sequenced. And in this particular image, what you can see is that across the years till 2005, when we have sequenced chimpanzee as well, we have been able to sequence many genomes, but the genome size is, is increasing. And interestingly, now, the time which we take to sequence is decreasing drastically. So, first printout of human genome uh, is, is present at the Wellcome Collection in London. The 3.4 billion units of DNA code are transcribed into more than 100 volumes. So, in this particular image, you can see that the chromosome 4 is on around 6 or 7 books. So, you have more than 100 volumes which has nothing but A, G, C, T, C, G, A, and so on and so forth. But an interesting thing happened, and that is that somehow the advance in technology made it possible for us. You can compare it to what we call in computer sciences Moore's Law. So what happened in computer sciences is that the number of transistor counts exponentially has been increasing. So if your computer used to have one transistor in back in 1971, in 2011, it has around 1 billion transistors. So the growth and also the computing power. So what happened with the sequencing data is that cost has been going down following pretty much actually even crossing Moore's law. So what you can see that what was very expensive to sequence a human genome, you had to spend around billion dollars, more than billion dollars on that. Now you can do at a fraction of a cost. So you, in this particular graph, you can see that how the cost is decreasing per raw megabase of DNA sequence. So for example, human genome project, it took more than 13 years and more than billion dollars to sequence it while in 2007, Watson, who got Nobel Prize for his discovery of DNA, well, the discovery of the structure of DNA, his was only sequenced in four months as compared to 13 years and for the cost of only $1 million. While Dr. Stephen Quake, who was one of the founders of Helicos, which was a small company based around DNA sequencing technology, sequenced his own genome in one month 
only for $48,000. And now you can get your genome sequenced and the reagents cost only for only $6.8 in one to two weeks. So you can see that how the cost has come down. Human Genome Project gave us enormous information. So for example, humans have only twice as many genes as Drosophila. Actually, I remember a lot I did my uh, FSC from FC College and there was this wonderful professor named Professor Ziaul Islam who used to teach us botany and he was very strict. And one of the students who was annoying me, I basically, uh, I was sitting behind him and I kept saying into his ears that, Pata hai tumhare father mein sirf do makhiyon ke barabar genes hai. And he got very annoyed ultimately. He complained to the teacher, ke ye kya kar rahe? Ye mujhe is tarah gali de rahe. And the teacher said, no, actually he is right. We have only twice as many genes as Drosophila. And we have pretty much same number of genes as mice. But then why one thinks why Drosophila has so many genes and it is of this particular, of this small size or mice may be the other genes use ko kyun zarurat hai? Kya hum log bhoat thode genes ke saath function kar rahe hain? This is one question which comes to mind which we will explore later when we will under, when we will study genome organization. But there is a good news. You are 99.9% .9 identical to any other human being. So Angelina Jolie or Aap may 99.9% .9 genes similar. Hai. Like you know, so you can say that dekho, itni zyada, sirf 0.1% you are different genetically from Angelina Jolie. I think on this note, you can see that 0.1% different cause karti hai. And that's what we will explore in future series. But um, ek cheez uh, jo human genome project ne bilkul khol ke kar di was that common belief before human genome project was that we have around 30,000 genes but now though the number has been reduced to 20,000 and people thought that there will, be, there will be a lot of actionable genes that these all drug targets will get to know and we will be solve all diseases. But the actionable genes are around 200 for which you can directly uh, make drug against either to enhance them or silence them. But we will see that how far Bacogenomics would play its role in future.